Hey everybody, happy uh, happy Friday, and I hope that you're having some good good YouTube in today and throughout the course of the weekend. I'll be your host, Lamb Dog seventy six, and you'll notice that the fasten seatbelt sign is on because. We are about to enter some turbulence, but do not be worried because an aircraft has never crashed from turbulence. It's crashed from wings falling off or engines breaking, but never from a turbulent. <laughs> oh, holy shit. So, um, the, the equation to figure out what in the inflation rate is. The inflation rate is your percentage of change of your M2 divided by gross domestic product for a given fiscal year let's say 2008 to your M2 divided by gross domestic product of 2009. <clears throat> M2 is all things money or that are substitutes for money. Gross domestic product is of course the oh so fancy replacement for uh, gross national product. I don't particularly feel like getting into the details of that, nor do I particularly feel like getting into the details of how these factors are skewed currently. I honestly could give two shits. What I will tell you is that the more accurate these factors are, the more less filled with shit, the more less skewed they are, the healthier our economy will become. Here's why. M2, the value of M2 can be adjusted based on its purchasing power of your gross domestic product. It's, it's variable. So in order to ensure that we have a reasonable change of inflation, which you wanted to go slightly up. And you know what else? I don't feel like telling you why you want it to go up either at the moment. You need to make sure everybody's accurate and it's no shit. Now, uh, the thing, this is for J-Rod 68, by the way. The, the thing that your instructor, your teacher, professor, regular guy teaching your class was talking about when they changed that we figured we went from seeing 20% inflation, now we're down to a more moderate level, which is around 1%. What we did was we quit track an M3. And what M3, what M3 is, it's M2 plus high dollar long-term securities, okay? Um, briefly, this is a very broad and brief stroke. Briefly, the reason why M3 can be taken out and doesn't affect the value of the dollar would be that when you invest a long-term large sum of money, it's not in play. So M3 a good portion of M3, this part of M3, that long-term investment of M3 isn't going to be in play for the gross domestic product of that particular year. Where it is valid, it will be a factor of the gross domestic product of another year, maybe 2011, maybe 2012. I would say 2013, but the fucking world's going to come to an end before that, right? So we don't have to worry about 2013, right, people? All right, so uh, that's what they did. They stopped doing M3. And um, the reason why you can get away with that, how you can justify it, is because when M3 matures, it will then turn into an M2, 
and then we'll be able to calculate it accordingly. Um, in the meantime, uh, M3 is monitored and measured and, and you'll know and you can adjust for M2 to maintain your monetary stability. Oh, what was the other question? Uh, oh yeah, you asked me about your associate's degree, whether or not um, to just blow right on through for the bachelor's or get your associates. My advice on that is to go ahead and and get the associates, continue on for the bachelor's, but but get the associates ASAP. And I'll tell you why. Uh, my wife, she's pretty cool, man. And she must be something else to be able to put up with my shit. <laughs> but um, she was in a position at her work and the idea of a raise came up. And uh, the one question for the raise, one of the criteria that the betters had was... Do you have a degree? Is that how you spell degree? And it didn't ask if you have an associate's degree. It didn't ask if you have a bachelor's degree. It just asked for a degree. Check in the box. Mo money. But that's my advice. And uh, how about you? I'll uh, go ahead and have a good weekend, and we'll, we'll see you next week.